Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Coach the Coach Radio. Brought to you by the Business Radio X Ambassador Program, the no-cost business development strategy for coaches who want to spend more time serving local business clients and less time selling them. Go to brxambassador.com to learn more. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Coach & Coach Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today we have with us Christine Miller with Miller Sales Consulting. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about Miller Sales Consulting. How are you serving folks? Well, I love to build and structure high-performance sales teams, so I... I help them with their sales team development and I coach their AEs. I work with the managers. I upskill them um, and support them in any way they need to help grow their business and uh, increase revenue. So how'd you get into the sales business? Uh, What drew you to that? Well, uh, um, how I originally got into the sales business, I think of my first sales job uh, was when I was a waitress at a restaurant called the, the Chowder Pot. And I still believe that people that are in the food service industry are selling because essentially they get paid on commission, which is tips. So uh, I guess that kind of drew me into it because there was no better way to make money when I was in college than than to be a waitress um, and make tips. But beyond that, I started at a local radio station. I left as a I I was working in it an in the house ad agency. And then switched over to selling, thinking I could always go back to advertising and marketing if I didn't like the selling piece. But then it really hooked me. I love the people. I love the ability to make as much money as I wanted. I love to watch businesses grow. And from there on, I just continued to be in sales as sales manager, director of sales, worked for a Fortune 50 company, and you know started my own business as well, focused all around selling and sales. Now, um, you mentioned something in passing, uh, the ability to kind of like not have a ceiling on how much money you made. Uh, Is that a driver for most good salespeople? I think the motivation for a good income that is within your own control is common along most good salespeople. I think that is something that is is common. Not, Not everybody. Some people, you know, really just like, helping businesses. But I think what I have found in my personal experience that very successful salespeople do like the ability to control their own income. And the reason I bring it up is um, that's kind of unusual. There's a lot of people, I would say the vast majority of the people are more comfortable in some secure, I can count on this uh, coming in every whatever week, month, every two weeks uh, rhythm. But some people aren't, they prefer to, like you said, kind of control their own destiny and um, kind of make more if the opportunity affords itself to it. And I didn't know if you found that that was just a trait of salespeople, um, that they're drawn to that. I, um, because yeah, I, when I, you said I, it, yeah, that, was, that was something that, said, to me, most people run away from that. Like, because I, I can make nothing. <laughs> Like that, that's also a choice too, you know? (laughs) Right. That's why most people aren't in sales. And I know sometimes there's this jealousy of uh, salespeople have this great lifestyle. They're going out to lunches, they're traveling, it's glitzy and fun. And the flip side of that is they don't know what their income is going to be because it's not a set income per se, at least a hundred percent. They're out in the rain and the snow. Uh, they get a lot of rejection. <laughs> Sometimes they have to deal with some, you know, unruly customers. We'll, we'll leave it at that. And so it is not for everybody. Yes, there is in many industries, unlimited revenue potential or earnings potential in the sales industry. Um, however, in order to really capitalize on that opportunity, you need to be skilled at what you do. And it is a skilled profession. And it frustrates me when people don't view it that way. Because in my opinion, you can't pluck somebody off the street and make them an amazing salesperson. There are some innate qualities 
that makes somebody good and successful versus maybe okay. And so if you put in the time to fine tune those skills, to continue to learn, to serve your customer, yes, you can reap the rewards of making a lot of money. That's the byproduct. Um, That's not the end game because there are people who go into this solely with the idea of, I'm going to get into this industry because I can make a lot of money. And generally, they're not the best salespeople. They're the, they're the negative stereotype that nobody wants to align themselves with. They're the pushy, obnoxious, selfish type salespeople that are in there to make a dollar. They're the caricatures that you see in all these sales movies that are funny to watch, but that make you cringe inside to think, oh my gosh, are there really people like that out there? So yes, income, the unlimited income potential, no glass ceiling for women. I think that's a huge selling point. If there are women that are concerned about that, look, you own your own destiny. Um, but you have to come with a set of skills and an attitude to be really good, to really reap that, that reward and be able to put up with the negative parts, all the rejection, (laughs) um, you know, all the other crazy stuff that goes along with sales too. So now in your business, when you, how did you make the transition from, Hey, I'm good at selling to, Hey, I'm good at showing other people how to be good at selling. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, so I moved up the ranks in sales from an AE to a sales manager and to a director. So within those roles, I had the opportunity to train and support coach a lot of salespeople. So that's where I got some of my experience. But I also realized how much I loved it and how much it made a difference. So it makes a difference to the seller in their success. It makes a difference to the customer and their experience. And it makes a difference to what is put out there in the sales world. And to me, that matters to me just as much as the other pieces. I'd like to see our industry be admired, um, not (laughs) feared, uh, not, uh, I don't know, all the negative connotations that go along with the sales industry. Helping to turn that around is making people better at what they do and eliminate some of those bad sales practices um, and those bad salespeople. So that's what motivated me to make the change. Um, that's how I determined that's what I like to do and that I think I'm, I'm fairly good at it. But going through, um, actually starting my family gave me the opportunity years, years ago to make that switch. So there was some timing that helped me make that switch as well as the motivation. And um, I know I have a similar passion when, and I get as fired up as you get fired up when about the negative stereotypes of sales. I get it as the negative stereotypes of owning a business or being an entrepreneur that I think some of the same things uh, come into play really? where, where people, <laughs> where people view that person as greedy exploiter taking advantage of people. And I think in sales, some people look at salespeople as just transactionally minded, whatever it takes for the sale, they'll say or do anything. And um, I think there's some similarities between the two groups. And in order to be a successful business owner, you have to be a a good salesperson. I mean, there's, they go hand in hand. Um, They're, they're kind of the same business, really. A salesperson and entrepreneur are kind of doing the same thing. They're trying to help another person get the outcome they desire. Yes. And interestingly enough, and I do a lot of work with small business owners, small, medium sized businesses, they don't have any training in sales. You know, some do, but most do not. What they're really trained in is their business or service. So, for example, I worked with a moving and storage company. And some people kind of look at me funny when they're like, You, sales coach and trainer, are working with a moving company? Yes. Why? Because members of their team answer the phone every single day and try to close deals. So someone calls in, they're looking for a quote. Now, the people answering the phone completely understand how to stack a truck, right? They can jenga all that moving stuff inside that I don't know how to do. They know the weight requirements. They know all that stuff, but they've never been taught how to advance the sale. They've never been taught on how to follow up. You know, they've never been taught any of those basic sales skills. And let me tell you, when you have a business that gets it because most business people are like, oh, the sales part, they don't like. Lots of CEOs and owners are like, love my business, but I don't want to sell because of the negative and they don't like the feel. Well, when you understand that it's just a set of skills and you know how to use them 
and you see positive results, the experience completely turns around. Now it's a great thing. Now it's a fun thing. Now, now I like doing it. And guess what? I'm growing my business and making more money too. Well, if you do it right, and in that small or mid-sized business, every one of your people becomes a salesperson, and then now Absolutely. you can be picking up incremental sales, upsells, all kinds of things Absolutely. that were just right in front of you <laughs> that you weren't even paying attention to because they're, you know, fill, you know, stacking boxes in the truck. <laughs> yes. You know? It's just yeah, opening their eyes. Up. It's a mindset shift, really. It is. And there's been so many years of the negative about selling and sales um, that it takes a, quite a bit of unwinding, you know, for people to realize. I can't even tell you how many times people say, I'll do this, but I don't want to be salesy or I don't want to sound salesy. Right. You know, like it's I a negative. Like, like they're saying, like, you know, <laughs> like I don't want to be, you know, a thief. Like it's just like right. they, they, the connotation is as if they're doing something immoral, uh, you know, and it's just that drives exactly. me crazy. Right. And I say the same thing. I'm like, good. I don't want you to sound salesy either. Exactly. I don't want you to be that way either. How about no. ha help let's somebody? <laughs> Why don't you just focus on helping somebody? Yeah. Let's not do that. Uh, let's start but, with helping. Yes. But the, the alignment of helping and selling is still not there yet to a lot of people. So those of us inside sales and business that get it, right, understand it. But for those others who are coming into it or maybe who won't who weren't brought up in an environment or culture that supports that helping and, you know, going together with selling, um, it's new and a little bit jarring. Like, wow, I, that's how it works. <laughs> it can work that way. Yeah, it can work that way. It actually works really well that way. So now when you're working with a, a, a client and you're kind of opening their eyes to the possibilities is, is sometimes that's like a big light bulb moment where they're like, Hey, I'm going to, I get that now. L let me lean into this and let me just kind of, you know, put the pedal to the ground at this point and let's get everybody involved. Or is it something that's like kind of a slow burn where you got to kind of earn your way and prove, prove this, mm -hmm. that it's going to work. Yeah. You know, it depends. It depends on the person or the, the company. Right. But, I, I think for a lot of people, you you have to sort of show it because the mindset so much is everything supports the other way of how people sell. Right. And like I said, every movie, TV show um, stereotype, we've we've had this ingrained in us for years that that's what selling is like. And that's what you have to be like if you're going to sell. And. So I think it interests people when they hear this. It makes sense to them, but they do need to to be convinced almost, you know, because sometimes there's some resistance. They know they can grow their business. They know there's some more opportunity. They know they're stuck. They don't know what to do next. Um, so they they need to kind of come along. And and often we we I call it practice. Other people call it role playing. You know, we do a lot of practicing to see how it can flow and what it can sound like so they understand it and then they then they take it to real life and see the results can you share an example of like maybe a, a back and forth coaching or practice that you would do with someone to kind of maybe improve their emotional intelligence when it comes to having a sales conversation well there's there's so many so you brought up a good point um upselling to you know talk there we do some conversational analysis role playing and dissect it to where the opportunities are where the motion all right so I'm, I'm getting this this is me uh thinking here it's coming all together okay coming out okay right well here. let me let me help you <laughs> uh, let's go back to the person in the truck and then yes. the person in the truck um is you know moving boxes and then maybe they see that there's a that they, they have a kid that's in college or going to college maybe a high school kid and then there might be an opportunity to move that kid at some future point but it would require right. a way to have a conversation with them and open up their mind that, hey, you know how we're moving you now. A year from now, we might be able to move Mary when she goes to college. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it can be even more simple than that. It can be a simple follow up call to that original customer, too. <laughs> like, there are so many little things that don't happen in the process that can move things forward. So if. I'm the movie company and I'm talking to that customer and they're asking for rates and information and they say, okay, great. I'm going to think about it. I'll let you know. Um, usually what happens on the other end is like, okay, thanks for calling. Bye. Right. 
at that opportunity, there's a chance to set up that next call. Okay, um, how about I connect with you again tomorrow and we can discuss what you find out? Or to your example, that's, you know, oh, you've got someone that's heading off to college. When is that? What's the timing? Let's talk about that. Do we want to set up a time to look at that? And I can give you some information or give you a quote. So often when you bring up emotional intelligence, for people that are reluctant with with sales, they have to get out of their own head that they're selling and think about how are they serving their customer. The customer isn't really spending as much time thinking about us and what we're doing as we think they are. You know, they really are trying to solve a problem. And if we can help them do that, then that makes a world of difference. Um, now, in in the world of the internet and social media, and, and I think you mentioned uh, social media a little bit er- earlier, um, is there a way to leverage the technology to kind of move the sale along, or at least introduce myself to somebody in a kind of a way that leverages technology that maybe folks aren't taking advantage of right mm. now? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. I'm like borderline obsessed with LinkedIn. I, I think it's one of, I, I would say it is a tool <laughs> that can be the most underutilized sales tool right now that's out there. That's free. And I, I'm talking about the free services and, and you can pay for, uh, you know, upgraded services and you can pay to have, you know, automation tied into your LinkedIn. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about using LinkedIn for social selling on its own free platform. So much you can do with that as far as finding out about your potential customer. Um, it's all there. You know, you, you know, the company or the person you want to talk to, look them up, read through their profile. That's going to tell you a lot. Look at what they're posting themselves. That's going to tell you a ton. You know, did they just expand? Did they get more funding? Um, are they hiring? You know, are they contracting? And then what are they commenting on and how are they commenting? So what interests them? You know, what's firing them up? Um, Who are their competitors? I mean, you can get so much intel from LinkedIn and engage with people there to warm up those those first calls or those those first interactions. So you can engage in their posts. Um, You can certainly know what's happening with them. And then when you do reach out to have that conversation integrate some of what you learned into that conversation, whether it's a email or an email or a phone call to show that you know a little bit of something about them, that you care about what they do instead of a generic cold call outreach that's often uh, all about the seller and their services and less about the buyer. Um, so I think there's a ton of opportunity with using social as a way to connect, really connect on a human to human level with someone that you're interested in working with. But isn't the challenge that um, is the human to human part. There's a lot. uh, I mean, I get bombarded with LinkedIn people that connect with me and, and literally a second later, they're selling me like, Hey, (laughs) you must be interested in whatever I'm selling because you connected with me. It's like, dude, you can't do right. that. That's just, a. I mean, I'm now I'm not following you. Now we're not friends Absolutely. anymore. <laughs> like you're out. And it, it, just because technology allows you to do certain things, maybe at scale, maybe certain things shouldn't be done at scale. <laughs> maybe it requires a little more humanness. It totally does. I've had those things happen to me too. And I, I try to not you be picky, but I, I try to vet those invitations and I always feel like I've been tricked when I accept something. Right. It's no, it's not neutral. Like, it's oh. negative. It, it, they go from being neutral and you not having an opinion to having a negative yes. opinion of them. It's laziness, Lee. <laughs> That's the only, and, and here's the thing. The person sending those messages needs to take some responsibility. The person managing that salesperson needs to take a lot of responsibility because that manager is either driving that behavior or not aware of that behavior. Now, I'm a big fan of technology and and artificial intelligence. There's some amazing sales tools out there that make the lives um, and the work of salespeople and sales teams so much easier and effective and super cool. However, you cannot lean on that 110% 
in a really big way. So you take out that human piece. You really need to have a balance of the use of AI and technology and emotional intelligence. You have to you have to be smart about it. The, the technology can do some things for you. Great. But you cannot you lose that human to human piece. Um, and that's what you're seeing on LinkedIn. A lot of us are seeing on LinkedIn. And essentially, it is, in my opinion, you know, this laziness of uh, ability to connect at scale, as you said, not really paying attention, kind of playing the numbers game. I'll send out a kajillion of these. Some will stick. That's good enough for me. But then what? You know, someone's it turns more people off, I think, than gets them in your funnel. And you still need to know how to take it from there and how to have conversations. And if that's the way you're starting out the relationship, I just don't have a lot of faith that the um, the conversations after I can tell you, I know <laughs> I've, I've gotten tricked twice. Like I get tricked sometimes when people, uh, you know, send me that sales email right away. Then right. I've gotten tricked where I think, Oh, this person's okay. And we set up an intro like, Oh, let's find out about each other. And then I'm bombarded with being sold on that first call or with having someone try to find out every little nuance about my business when they don't know me, like asking about my revenue and you know, like, what right. kind of hit did I take in 2020? <laughs> and, you know, um, so definitely there needs to be a blend of the two. Right. It's you know, not a blunt but, instrument where like just because no. it can do this, well, all it's doing to me is polluting the channel for everybody else. Like at some point yes. people are like, forget it. LinkedIn's no good because there's just it's just selling. And then you just throw this valuable tool in the garbage because so many people are misusing it. I, I think and I've heard rumors it hasn't been validated by LinkedIn yet to just within the last couple of weeks, they've limited outreach to 100 a week. And I think they're putting some other things in place to try to, you know, stop this because it's bots and automation that are doing it. There's no person that is sending out that many um, <laughs> right. requests or messages a day on their own. It's a machine somewhere. And the machines are taking something positive and turning into negative. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean you still can't have good connections and use the tools it was designed to be used because there are people out there doing it the right way right. and getting great results. Sure. Um, it's it's all the noise around it that's just starting to get really loud. Right. And all you take it takes a good all it takes is a good a, a bad good marketer that has kind of not I don't want to say evil intent, but is misusing it. And then all of a sudden, they're telling a hundred people how to do it, and now those numbers are going to just, you know, it just pollutes the channel. That's all. And um, I'm glad that LinkedIn is at least considering taking some, um, you know, something to fix that because it it can get ugly pretty quickly. And I the the rate of me getting those spammy now buy my mm -hmm. stuff things immediately after connection are getting higher and higher. It's not getting less. No. I'm with you. When I have time, sometimes I offer those people sales help. That's just my own. <laughs> Do they even listen? Do they? I mean, is it even a human you know, being? Are they even kind of um, replying back to that kind of stuff? Yes. A couple <laughs> times uh, they they did. Because sometimes I feel, sometimes, you know, I feel angry and frustrated. And other times I feel like, well, here's um, a business development rep or someone that has not been taught the right way. Right. And it's an opportunity. They're really, they're, right. <laughs> they're really learning everything wrong and I feel bad for them. And I will reach out and say, hey, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't really work. If and it just perpetuates, like them. you said, that negative stereotype of salespeople. They're just kind of spraying and praying. So, uh, right. you know. it, it really, really does. And it makes people tune out. So yeah, it, it's, it's got to get fixed. And, and so yes, LinkedIn should do what it needs to do, but sales leaders need to do what they need to do too, which is use the tool to help make things a little more streamlined, but you cannot use tools that just beat people over the head in a way that's negative because that's no different than the pussy pushy uh, salesperson in your face of yesteryear, right? That won't leave you alone. It's the same kind of badgering, except it's now being done electronically or digitally. Right. And it's being done automated so that they just click a yes. button and then they're just going, where's my leads that have popped in that connected with me or did whatever you wanted them to do. Um, yeah. So they're not even doing the work. Like if they had to physically send out each of those individually, then they yes. would realize that it's not effective. <laughs> the fact that they don't have to is what makes them is tempting to them. It, it's that fool's gold or the, you know, the magic right. pill that everybody's looking for. 
Right. And, and the thing is, if you wanted to do 20 a day, 10 or 20 a day, I mean, let's say even 20 a day in a five day work week for an outreach of 100 with some personalization in there with some looking, is this a good person that I could help potentially? Um, that's not that much time. It's really not, you know, it's right. pretty fast that you can research, find someone, send them a, you know, look at their profile, look at what they've been doing, maybe message that, uh, you know, make a comment on their post or engage with them in a conversation online, send them a message about that post, you know, you know, mentioning that there might be some alignment, would love to set up a time to just chat and then truly have a conversation afterwards. That is a get to know you, not a sales pitch. I mean, I've met some amazing people this past year doing that and it's there. Uh, but, you know, you've you've got to slow down and be a little smarter. Right. With with the game plan. And again, that, but that's the humanness and that's why your practice is so valuable to folks where you're kind of elevating sales and you're making it that kind of human to human connection that it can be rather than this transactional, let me just crank out a million numbers and I'll get mine kind of mentality that a lot of folks have and, and, and folks that want to elevate mm -hmm. their selling to that personal, that, you know, kind of relationship driven, um, kind of uh, interaction that it can be, those are the people that are good fits for you, I would think. Yes, absolutely. It, you've you've got to want to do a little bit of work. You have to have that emotional intelligence, um, the ability to work with tools and technology, because, you know, throwing your hands up and saying, I'm no good with technology. I can't wait till things go back to the way they were. That's not going to really be, that's not a good plan either. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're, gonna get, they're, they're out there too. Yeah, you can <laughs> knock on those doors. Go ahead. Send out your, your guy parking on the corner and knocking on those doors. <laughs> There's nobody there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or, you know, come in and talk about the little league game for an hour. You, you know, that sort of, you know, my client loves me and, and I've told more than one rep. Yes, they do. They really do like you. However, if you're not bringing value, they're going to buy from somebody else. Now they'll <laughs> right. feel bad about it because they really like you. Right. They're going to feel bad breaking up with you, <sighs> but they're going to break up with you. Why? Because they're running a business and right. they need to make good business choices. And if you're not bringing them some sort of value and you're not reinforcing the value that you bring, even after the sale, then you're going to be the one that gets cut and yeah. they'll feel bad about it because they like you, but you're not going to make it. Amen to that. That is great advice yeah. for everybody. If there's somebody out there that wants to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, uh, what's the website? Yeah, MillerSalesConsulting.com. Really uh, simple. Miller, as you would expect it to be uh, spelled, SalesConsulting.com. There's contact buttons uh, all over the place there and a form you can fill out. Um, email me. Uh, certainly, if you can find me on LinkedIn. I, I love to connect with you know, real people on LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> and, and have a conversation and then take it offline if it makes sense. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty easy to find and I love to meet new people and always uh, open to having, you know, an initial conversation just to find out more about each other. No obligation, no fee, none of that stuff. Just wow, to see if it's a fit or not. Area. What a concept. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today, Christine. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Coach the Coach Radio. Yeah.